What's going on, guys? James Camacho here. This is Kicking It With Camacho. Hope you had a great weekend. Thank you so much for kicking it with me. Um, what are we at? We're episode number 94. I think this is either 94 or 95, man. Holy hell, we're almost coming up on 100. You know what's funny? So, obviously, you guys know we're doing the, I'm doing the watch hour goals update every week. Wouldn't it be fitting? Wouldn't it be nice to have such a round number, episode 100, be when I get the the monetization requirements, you know? Now, the way we're trending, so let me just tell you guys, I'm at 3,943, which means um, 57 away. I'll be completely honest, um, six more episodes would be about three weeks. I think we'll probably uh, get it um, uh, by then, but yeah, had to do 100 of these podcasts to uh to get to the monetization you know that's for all you people out there that are lazy man you know all you people that want to start podcasts you know you want immediate success you gotta do it you gotta be consistent you gotta be every week a hundred episodes until i'll be making a dime doing this crap you know um i think there was a study that like uh 90 something percent of podcasts don't make it past like 20 episodes or something, you know, which is, uh, it's pretty crazy, man. Y'all a bunch of lazy mofos out there. Y'all be starring stuff, not finishing stuff, you know, America. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well, though. Hope you had a great weekend. Um, I realize, um, the way I set the camera up, I'm a bit more close up and like less of my body is, uh, it's a weird angle. I don't know if it's like, cause it's like usually, uh, a little bit uh, longer, wider, fatter, whatever, um, stretched out. But um, I guess I messed up. I don't know what I did wrong. Um, I'm, I'm a mess up. I'm a fuck up. I'm a screw up. I'm a, I'm a bastard child. Anyways, um, hope you had a great weekend, like I said. Let's get into it, man. So I told you the watch hours goal update. Um, let's talk about my tour dates. As you guys know, I'm taking... Uh, August off of the road. I'm kind of on vacation in a, in a, in a sense, you know, I'm not on full vacation, but, um, I'm not touring and I'm just pretty much, it's like a staycation. Like I'm still, you know, doing work. I'm doing emails. I'm doing podcasts. Um, but I'm not traveling as much. I'm really just trying to be low key. Um, spend some time with my cats, you know, you know, ass to couch action, a lot of that. Um, and I also, you know, I'm still doing shows, but I'm just going to be doing like small spots around the city. I'm actually thinking about going, uh, going away this weekend. Cause this is actually the only weekend I have like nothing booked. Um, I have like small city shows, uh, throughout the month of August every weekend, but I'm thinking like maybe I, um, you know, just take the cats and, uh, just kind of, you know, take like two complete days to just uh do nothing but we'll see man i don't know i'm such a workaholic you know that's the one thing about like being a hard worker like it's obviously noble it's obviously but it's like it's so funny it's like so many people will be like man you're such a hard worker you're a grinder hustle culture blah 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 hashtag motivation monday but it's like um at a certain point it just becomes like routine you know like it's gotten to the point where it's like i keep working like i don't even know what to do like um, I don't know how to do anything else. So it's funny when it's just like, oh, like you have time off or your vacation. It's just like, I'm so used, I'm like a drug addict. I'm so used to doing the work and like hustling that when I sit around, I'm kind of going through withdrawal. You know, I always feel like I should be doing something. I should be like, uh, I don't know, sending an email. Um, but I'm going to try this month to really, really, cause I got in the back of my head anytime I'm like, do something, work hard. It's just like, nah, dude, like, uh, let's ease up a bit, you know? I got a list of movies I got to watch. I got of, um, what else do I got to do? Uh, bleh, bleh, I don't know. Just, just chill out a little bit, you know, take it easy, take it easy. But, um, yeah. So, um, after my little, uh, hiatus, I'll be, uh, doing a lot of tour dates, man. So I'm going to need the, the rest in August, but in September, going to Oak Park, Illinois on the 13th, Montgomery, New York at City Winery, Hudson Valley, September 19th. Seattle, Washington, September 26th to 28th. Tacoma, Washington, September 29th. 
San Antonio, October 12th. Boulder, Colorado, October 26th to 28th. Bowling Brook, Illinois, uh, December 6th to 7th. Chicago, December 8th. Hartford, Connecticut, December 14th. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, December 28th. And this just uh, announced, tickets are not on sale yet, but I will be uh, in Florida um, in 2025. Just booked Fort Myers, Florida, April 3rd to 5th, 2025. And then the week after, I'll be in Palm Harbor, Florida, April 10th to 12th. Tickets are not on sale for those yet, but, um, you know, keep an eye out, guys. I'll be coming back to Florida, you know. I'll be, uh, you know, burning masks and uh, saying screw Fauci and... um, not getting abortions. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then also be in Anchorage, Alaska. I don't remember what dates those are, but the tickets aren't on stuff for that yet either. Um, if you guys want to request a city for me to come perform in, um, if you go to my website, there is a link. It's called email request. Email list slash request your city. You just go on there, um, fill out the form. It lets me know the places in this in God's green earth where uh, people want to see me and um, I'll um, push a little harder to get in those places. I feel like I feel like not enough of my body is in the frame. You know, like I messed up. Whatever. What did I do? All right. Maybe I got to. You know what I do? What, what can I do? Uh, maybe I'll sit on. The, I have a blanket here. Maybe I'll just sit on the blanket. Elevate myself. Oh, no. My paper. My paper. Um, yeah, maybe I'll elevate myself a little bit here. That looks a little better, right? All right, yeah, this makes, this actually makes more sense. It looks like I was sinking before, wasn't it, didn't it? Um, but yeah, guys, come see me. And um, I think that's, uh, you know, this is actually a perfect segue. We can get into this. As you guys know, i um been promoting my uh, New York City show, Fresh Mud Blood. Um, I do it every month, every other month. It's just a, it's just a show I do for, um, for me to, like, work out material do a headline set in New York City, and um, uh, we just did one this past Saturday, this past weekend, and uh, what a great turnout, man. We actually sold out the tickets online. We had more people come buy tickets at the door. It was the best turnout I've had for the show, and um, again, like, you know, talking about the watch hours and the progress is like, I think this is maybe the sixth six one I've done um and it's just I see the progress like every show has gotten like progressively um better attended um and I'm starting to like get a better um uh understanding and um I guess a better uh just just I'm just learning how to produce the show better and also just like you know running the show better um, but it was a it was a it was a fun show. I want to shout out to anyone that went there. Um, like I said, I think we had a total of maybe 37 people. It's a small place, Soho Playhouse. I think the place seats maybe like 40. If you want to really squeeze in people, add extra seats, maybe 50. Um, but yeah, it was a for me it was a success. Um, and uh, I'll be doing another one soon. We're gonna try to see if we can do late August, early September. And I'd love for you to come out. I'm actually thinking about recording the next one because um, I have a certain chunk of material. I'll just tell you guys what it is. I don't want to be so secretive. You guys are my family. You guys are my uh, my best best friends, best buds. Um, I have all this like breakup material uh, about my ex that I've been doing for like a year. And um, the material is starting to get old. Um, and for a comedian, when a, when a joke gets old... There are signs, you know, like, like, you know how when you work out, they say, listen to your body, you know, if you're sore, if you're this, you're that, just listen to it, right? Don't, don't push, you know, uh, further than you have to don't, you know, just listen to your body. It's like your body will tell you, you know, even like intuition, your intuition, your mind will kind of tell you what to do in situations and you just got to listen sometimes, you know? Um, but a, when a, when a joke is old for a comedian, like a sign that it's old is that when like. You don't really get too excited to like tell the material, and for me, especially because the breakup when I first started working on this stuff, um, you know, obviously I was going through it, so I was a little bit more connected to it. But as I've kind of gotten over it and moved on, um, I just like am realizing I'm doing the jokes in um, 
like I'm trying to do the joke with like present tense vocabulary. But there have been like updates in my life regarding the breakup that are causing me to like um, kind of switch up the tenses. So I'll give you an example. So like my ex and I, we had cats together. I lost the cats. And I used to do all these jokes about losing the cats. But now I have my own cats. So it was just weird to like kind of, you know, make jokes and like tell my sob story about losing my cats, which is very sad. But I also have new cats. And then like I have other jokes about the new cats. So it's like. It's weird. It's like I'm trying to, you know, and one, you know, a little comedy one on one. It's always better to make jokes sound like they just happened. Um, if you go past tense or if you like bring up something like, oh, you know, last year this happened to me, it just doesn't hit as hard. Like people in the crowd want to feel like you, you know, you're just like experiencing and the things are new and fresh. So I've kind of am thinking about next month when I do or the next Mud Blood show. By the way, fresh Mud Blood. Is a play on being mixed. It's a Harry Potter term. That's also a play on being mixed race. As you guys know, I'm Chinese, Puerto Rican, mixed race. Um, mud blood is the Harry Potter term for half muggle, half wizard. Um, and then, like, you know, there's that term fresh blood. And since the show is about me working out material, that's where the term comes from. I just want to let everyone know. It's a Harry Potter uh, term. Um Oh, boy, I hate when I go on tangents because 98% of the time, I don't remember where the hell I was. Um, but, yeah, oh, here we go. So on the next show, I'm thinking about doing a showcase where I book a few more comics. They're all, they'll all do like 15, 20 minutes each. And then I'll probably just do 20 minutes at the end and just do the breakup material and just film it and then actually put it out as like a mini special. That's kind of what I'm thinking of doing for next month. Um, obviously, if that actually comes to fruition, I'll let you know. Um, I have a... I already have a comedy special um, in the chamber that I'm releasing soon. So it'd be weird to have two comedy specials, but actually that'd be a good thing. Cause then I'm like, I have like, you know, backup ammo, right? Like I have so much content ready to go, but I just got to start putting stuff out. I'm starting, it's starting to get to the point where like with my, my comedy special, it's like, I'm one of those guys like, and there's a lot of artists like this that are too scared to like put their work out there. Um, but I'm not. It's uh, it's coming out soon, guys. We're just um, we're just doing some things behind the scenes to prepare everything. So just keep posted. Um, but yes, fresh mud blood. What a what a what a great success. Let me tell you a little bit about the night. Um, so it's a Saturday. Um, what did I do the Friday before? Oh, the Friday before. All right, you know what we're gonna do here, guys? We're just gonna recap the few days um, between the last weekend podcast and uh, today. Um, so Friday, I record the podcast. I get up like the crack of dawn. I think I get up at like four in the morning. I work out. I come back. I record the podcast. Um, that was fun too. It was fun like telling the story about like how I missed my flight. Like it was like a, it felt like a roller coaster ride. I was I was taking. I was like telling it. I hope you guys felt the same way. Um, but so after that, um, I'm working on a a, a teaser trailer slash kind of like a. Uh, passion project um my buddy and i we recorded like a 40 second small thing that i'm gonna use to promote the special but it's also just like a just a fun little project passion project that i wanted to do so we filmed it we edited it um but we had to do voiceover work for it so on friday after the podcast i go down to brooklyn and i go in there to uh, I meet my buddy Rob, who is the director, the um, uh, camera guy, producer. Um, super cool dude, guys. If you ever like need professional videos done, photography, um, his name is Rob Prodo. You can look him up on Instagram. He's done a lot of stuff for like uh, Calvin Klein campaigns, Tommy Hilfiger. Um, he's done a lot of stuff. He's really good. He's done a lot of music videos. Um, um, works with a lot, works well at influencers. So I get down there. I meet my buddy Rob at his place in the Lower East Side. We hang out, we talk, and then we take the train over to um, Williamsburg. And we uh, he's got so so Rob has a a friend who's an audio engineer. Um, he makes like a lot of music for um, movies, TVs, commercial spots, yada yada yada. Original scores, as they call them. So I um. I never met the guy, but Rob swears by him, and I trust Rob. So I go down there, and um, we go to the guy's apartment, 
and we get in there and it's a really cool apartment man it's like close to the water close to the bridge um i don't know it's hard to describe because like his apartment's dope but it's not dope in like a nice way like it's not like you know what do you call it uh state of the art like like um i don't know amenities like it's like an old building you know there's no like like silver top appliances there's no like um i don't know like you know use your phone to open the door you know it's just a classic put your key and stuff but it's like his apartment like it's cool because like it's it was a good size and like he has uh his studio in there where he does all his audio stuff so you walk in and like there's like these like three monitors against the wall with like these two giant speakers um you see the microphone with the the pop filter and um the stand and um Another cool thing too is like this guy, you could tell I could tell immediately like he's an artistic guy because his apartment had all these like old records, these all these books just stacked on top of each other, right? He had like the the TV on a mount with also these other giant speakers, and like he had like these just like weird things like he had like bowling ball pins. Um, he had like these posters that were like really niche and and cool from like old school classic uh, movies. Um, and uh, it really felt like I was coming into like a a stoner apartment, but like a creative like stoner, you know, not like a stoner who doesn't do shit with his life. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was cool, man. It's just like the apartment, like his apartment for sure, like says a lot about him and like what he's into. You know, I feel like if you go into my apartment, you're not really getting much. You probably look at it and like, oh, this guy's just some some. Some messy, you know, just messy boy, you know, <laughs> some man child that lives in here. Um, but yeah, we get in, man. And um, it was great because like instantly, instantly, like I had a connection with the guy, me, Rob and the guy, Otto, who does the audio. Like before we even started doing the work, we like BS for like an hour, maybe 90 minutes of just about life, about show business, about politics, about just like everything in general, man. And like everything was clicking. We're, ha we're sharing big laughs, making good points. We're sharing like books we should read, like movies we thought were great. And, um, man, like it's just, just a great, interesting, stimulating conversation. You know, like this guy is right up my alley, you know? Um, so, and very smart too. It's like, you know, you know, we're talking politics, we're talking movies, we're talking art, we're talking like theater history. Um, filmmaking history and um it's just so interesting to like you know in a way i felt dumb because this guy's like referencing all these like you know old filmmakers and just like uh these books and i'm just like i don't read i don't know anything about history i will say this the one history i do kind of know a little bit about is theater history because i was a theater major in college and i took theater uh history classes so I know, like, the origins of theater. Like, theater was actually, it started out as, like, a, obviously a form of entertainment, but it was really just to, like, please kings and shit, you know? Like, kings that, like, you know, literally, like, a jester would come in, but, like, the king would be bored, he wanted entertainment, and, like, they like these like, they had these, like, little plays and stuff, you know, um, that they would do just, just to amuse him, right? Um, man, it's fascinating. It's fascinating, the origins of, like, all this stuff, like, you know, film, TV. And, you know, he, we were also talking about, like, how film, like, TV is actually doesn't have that much history because um, the first film was, like, what? Maybe, like, 1940, 50? So that's interesting. And comedy also is another thing that doesn't have that big much of a history because I don't think comedy... It's funny because, like, you know, Carlin and these guys were, like, really the first comedians. And it's really, like... I'm, like, a three... Maybe two or three generations after that because after... After you have, like, Carlin, you have, like, Chappelle, and then I guess, uh, now you, and like, like, you know, Chappelle, Louis, and now you have this, like, and those guys are still alive. Think about it. Like, the second generation of comedians, and even the first, like, Bill Cosby is still alive, which obviously, you know, a lot of people don't wish, wish that wouldn't be the case, but, um, yeah, it's like, the people who started comedy and stuff are still alive. Isn't that crazy? You know, sometimes you think about history, especially like American history or, you know, countries history. Um, you know, these people are like Abraham Lincoln or George Washington. It's like you can't even imagine them like being like living things. But um, it's interesting. History is fun. 
History was actually one of my favorite classes uh, when I was growing up because it was just like, you know, because like it's almost like you're reading fiction, but you're not. You're reading nonfiction, but you're just like reading stories and um, people and like you can kind of follow, follow a narrative, you know, um, with the other stuff like math and science. It was so much like memorization and just like logic and just boring. Like there was something about history that was pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ah, I miss school. Just going to history class, just learning about presidents and stuff. Um, but, uh, oh boy, I went on a huge tangent again. But yeah, oh, so, so, so we do the recording and, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't want to give too many details away because I don't want to like, kind of like ruin what's going to happen. But, um, I'll just say this. Um, it was so much fun to meet like like minded people. And then, like, there was this punk rock. Uh, guy that came in after um, during our session and because he was recording music with Otto and uh, again just another great dude another artist um, and we just you know yucking it up you know uh, connecting sharing life you know whatever just just having great interesting invoking conversation and it was a lot of fun and dude here's one thing as we're recording this audio um, and then also I realized this too, kind of when I was recording the actual, when I was actually filming this, um, project that I'm working on, there is nothing more fun than filming stuff. Um, not just with your buddies, with, with people in general, you know, cause if you really think about the essence of like acting or just like, rec- like making films or shorts, it's literally play. Like, you know, when, you know, kids are in a playground, they're playing with each other. That's literally what acting is. You're pretending, you're playing around, you're being this character, being that character. You're playing like you're sad. You're playing like you're angry. It's all make-believe, made up. It's all fun, you know? And, dude, I will say, I, 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 I've never, the, the hardest, I've, I laugh. Like, the last few times I've laughed, like, really, really hard, like, heartily, where, like, it hurts have all been when I'm filming movies and TV, man, you know? Like, you know, because, like, I don't know, there's something that's just, like, you're creating something, so that's fun. You're bringing, like, a, you know, whatever you wrote down to life. But then when, like, you're doing lines with another person and they're making you laugh or you can't get the lines right and you're making each other laugh or it's, like, you're doing, a, like, a comedy scene or a fun scene, like, it's just fun, man, you know? Like, I was cracking up so hard at, uh, because, like, we were running, we were, we were kind of doing the lines I wrote, and we kind of realized, like, how, how kind of, like, silly some of them sounded. Like, as we're doing it, so we're, like, we're kind of, like, editing on the fly, and then we just had so many laughs, you know? It's just, oh, man. I remember, too, I shot these um these short sketches, which uh, I got to I gotta, I gotta get those out, too. But, like, just, like, I remember I was doing lines with this one lady, and I couldn't stop laughing, dude. Like, she, she was such a good actress, like her face as I was doing the lines. I just couldn't, like, hold it back. And I was just, like, dude, just cracking up laughing to the point where my sides were hurting. Like, side gut-busting laughs. And, God, man, there's no better feeling than getting laughs like that, dude. And I really, really... It, it's kind of, like, inspiring me. One, because I'm a creative person. I want to make more stuff. But it's, like, dude, that experience being on set, just just uh, playing around, acting... Whether with, if it with your, even if it's not with your buddies, like, you know, I've done movies and TVs, not bragging, but like I've done shows for like CBS and like, you know, mo- like movies, like, and just being on set and like talking to people, it's just all fun. We're all playing around. It, it really is just a good time. I would say filming a, a film, movie, TV, music video, whatever, it could obviously be very, very stressful, but for the actors, for the, for the entertainers, um, unless you're doing like, like, I don't know, I, I guess if you're taking it like. Joaquin Phoenix type of seriousness, like method acting, where it does very seem intense. But if you're just filming a comedy or something like lighthearted and and like quick and neat, it's it's it really is the adult equivalent of like kids on a gray playground playing. Because what are kids on a playground doing? They're like they're playing tag, right? Or you're it, I'm it. Maybe one guy pretends like he's a monster, right? You know, or like even if you're a kid, like with the sandcastle, right? You take like your toy. T-Rex, rawr, you know, like all that stuff. And you're just playing pretend and there's no like, there's no anxiety. There's no like fear of judgment, you know. Oh, man. Just, just, just good old fun and levity, you know. But anyways, um, so we filmed that. 
I go home. I uh, I just take it easy. I watch some baseball. I go to sleep. And then the next day um, is Saturday. I got my big show at the Soho Playhouse. It's always nerve-wracking having these shows because I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm self-aware. I'm not famous. Um, I'm nobody, right? I have, a, I have like a small fan base on the, on the good old internets. So obviously when I do these shows, every show I'm like scared, like no one's going to show up, you know. But um, tickets have been moving pretty okay. Um, but, the here, but the thing like with comedy shows, it really does seem like most people buy their tickets very last minute, which is very stressful for the people running the show. So I think all up the week I had maybe like a dozen, maybe a dozen tickets sold. But then like Friday, Saturday, they started kind of funneling in. So after Friday, I was about 20. And then I woke up Saturday with like 23 or 24. And uh, the, the the ticket limit on Eventbrite was 25. So I'm kind of like, oh, once we hit 20, I'm like, all right, we got a show. Because there's so many things you got to account for. Like, yeah, you may get like 20 people to buy tickets, but there's always people that don't show up. So a lot of times you kind of cut that by 20%. So in my mind, hearing 20 is 15 which for me is like enough for like a decent show. That's why I was like stressed out when it's like 10 or a dozen tickets sold. Cause if you take 20% of that, then you're starting, you're kind of getting the single digits, you know? Um, but no, so we sell out the tickets online. I'm super, uh, excited now. Um, so I just kind of, uh, you know, I do a little bit of a last minute promo. Um, I watch tapes, um, and prepare my set and I get down there. I have a little bit of a snafu with the train so it was a little stressful getting downtown. So from where I live to where the Soho Playhouse is, where I did the where I did the show is about forty minutes if the trains are running right. It took me a freaking hour just because of like you know delays and stuff. So, but here's the one th- here. But here's another reason why I'm super happy um, with the show and doing it at the Playhouse. You know, because like I always have felt like with the past shows. I needed to get to the show early and like set up and make sure everything's okay. The one thing I love about the Soho Playhouse is that everything's set up. They got a microphone set up. They got the sound system set up. They got the lights set up. They have a box office person, right? So I didn't, I got, I was there. I actually showed up to the show late. The show was at 9 p.m. I got there at like 9.05. And dude, every, they, they were able to just run everything. People checked in, they sat them, and then like, I, it wasn't like I had to go in there and like last minute set everything up. So I just really appreciate that, man. Whether it's like, um, you know, when, I, when I'm a comedian, like, you know, I, 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 I really try, you know, cause I just get so sick of like doing business stuff in terms of like sending emails, social media, um, booking my flights, all this stuff, man, that I, I just want to focus on the art, you know? And the last thing I want to do is add being a producer or like a, you know, checking people in at a show or being like a, like a light and sound guy, you know, I don't want to do any of that. Um, so shout out to the Soho Playhouse, man, for, um, just making sure that everything ran smooth. Um, I have a couple of openers, Keith Chase hosts, Quinn, I forget her last name. She did a spot. And then Kyle Mara, my buddy from the comic strip did a spot. Everyone did really well. I go up, I do an hour, have a good time and, um, you know, get some work done. Um, the show, um, so Quinn actually, a lot of her sorority sisters came out this, to the show. So the show really was like, it's so funny because when, usually when people come see me, it's usually either Asian people, Chinese people, Puerto Rican people are mixed race couples. And this was like the first time I've done a show, my show, where it was like, just all like white girls, like just like young white girls, you know? Um, uh, but they were great, man. Young white girl, young people in general in New York, especially like your NYU, like these girls are from Duke, but like you're like, you know what I mean? Like you're doing well in life, college girls, college boys, like they love them sex jokes, boy. Woo! You know, this this younger generation is real horned up, I got to say, you know, because I was doing all my, um, I have, you know, I, I got a good chunk of uh, sex material that I'm doing and uh, it was doing really well. And then like um, the moment I started getting like, uh, deep and like thoughtful and i feel like the material didn't like connect as well because you know kids you know kids are just all they're thinking about is drinking and getting laid they're not really like too introspective you know but um a fun show 
Um, I had a few fans that came out from like long distances, which is great. Oh boy, I forget the name. Uh, but there was a really handsome gentleman from Texas that was there. Shout out to him and his girlfriend. Beautiful, beautiful couple, man. Just a just a hunk of a guy and a beautiful his girlfriend was uh, very cute. They came from Texas. Um, he owns like 10,000 acres of land, which is uh, freaking amazing. I have 600 square feet I'm renting here. <laughs> um, and then um, we had a lady come out from the show from Florida. She uh, was very sweet. She made me actually like a little bracelet. Um, and um, I don't know if she made it for me, if she had them like ready to go. But she she made a bracelet. She was very nice after um, it was great to meet her as well. I forget her goddamn name. I have it somewhere. I think I wrote it down here. Uh, let me see if I can get her name. Monica. Monica. Shout out to Monica for coming out. And I think Dan from uh, Facebook came out to see me. Um, it's funny because Dan, every every video, every piece of content I post, he somehow sexually harasses me in the comments. Um, <laughs> but, but he didn't come say anything to me in real life, which is... Uh, is I guess he's I guess you know he's the guy's got a little bit of a he's got uh, what do you call it he's got internet muscles I guess you know you're hot you're sexy take your pants off and in real life he uh he coward you coward no I'm kidding I appreciate you coming out Dan I think he came out like I don't know like he wrote to me that um <laughs> I, I I posted a thing about like the show oh we sold it out great show and then um <laughs> he writes. He just writes, uh, it was a great show, a lot of laughs. I was there, but your underwear was on. Boo! I was like, oh, my God. What are you going to do? Um, you got to take the fans you can get, right? Um, but, yeah. So we did that. Um, I go home. I wake up Sunday. And, dude, I'm just so relieved because, you know, I'm already kind of in this, like, vacation mode, relax mode, stay home for a month mode, rest, get some, like, you know, rest before I go on my tour again in September. Um, but, you know, I got back from Montana, and obviously I was, like, feeling that, but then, like, I still had the Mud Blood show to, to promote and worry about. But now, after that show's done, I'm completely, like, stress-free, man. Like I said, like, I just got small city spots, nothing I got to really promote. I'll be promoting a little bit my shows in September, but, like, this, I feel free now, man. I feel, like, just able to kind of relax a little bit, focus on um, just promote, like building my social media following, making fun content and um, just, you know, making the, the project, uh, passion project and putting out my special. And I'm just like, dude, I couldn't be happier, man. Like it's, um, yeah, I, I feel so, you know, I feel proud. I feel like uh, tired, but also a sense of accomplishment, which I think is the best feeling when you pull off stuff that's hard and you're exhausted, but you know you gave the reason why you're so exhausted is because you gave literally every piece of effort you had into it. Um, I just feel so, so cool, man. Um, with that being said, the next day, Sunday, um, I have a date night um, with, a, with a lovely lady. I've seen her a few times now. Um, she's cool, man. Um, I feel like uh, we have a fun little uh, connection. I'm talking about, like, uh, having, like, impactful stimulating conversation we have a lot of those and i also feel like she uh she's very understanding of who i am you know like you know as i've gotten older and especially with my last relationship my last breakup i'm just getting to a point now where I'm, if i'm dating or meeting people i'm just like i'm just 100 percent myself man and if you don't like it i'm just like that's that's fine like you don't like it that's fine but like i'm only looking for someone out there where i can literally be completely myself and they like it, you know, so I'm not going to like be phony to just to try to get someone to be with me. You know, I won't be happy like that. In a way, my last relationship, it got to the point where I wasn't being myself and, you know, I was miserable. Right. So, yeah, this girl, I just been throwing it all out there and uh, she's been pretty receptive to it. Um, so um, we had a nice little night uh, day, really. Oh, we had an evening. We uh, we took a walk, got some drinks, got some ice cream. Nah, nah, nah. And then uh, we did some more licking later, if you know what I mean. Um, it was a great, it was a great way to just kind of like, and I'll be honest, man. Um, it was a good way to like kind of like uh, celebrate and start the kind of like mini vacation. Um, I was looking forward to the uh, seeing her, man. I'll be honest. So, 
You know, Big James got a little butterflies going on. You know, Jimmy James got a little got a little crush going on. But um, no, nah, she's cool. She's cool. I wouldn't even consider it a crush because I feel like there's like infatuation with like crush. You know, right? Like kind of like 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 uh, dumb infatuation. Oh, I have a crush. Oh, I can't stop thinking. It, it's just more like it's just more of an adult type of uh interest, if that makes sense. But that was fun. That was literally less than 24 hours ago. 12 hours ago. Yeah, we were up all night. Uh, anyways, um, so guys, uh, that was uh, that was pretty much my weekend. And um, right now, I want to take the time to do something we haven't done in a while. Um, kind of a shout out to the original form of the podcast. If you guys are just tuning in, obviously, I've done almost 100 of these. But when the podcast first started, it was supposed to be a sneaker podcast. Um, I've kind of gone, a, you know, obviously it isn't <laughs> a sneaker podcast. Um, it's just me babbling and, um, just sharing, you know, sharing, uh, my life and stuff with you guys. But I used to do a lot of unboxings and, uh, we're going to do an unboxing today. I kind of got myself an early birthday present. Um, I got a pair of these, uh, this is a big pickup. I think, I don't know. Um, I got a pair of Travis Scott. It's new, ju- new shoe. Um, these are called the man. What do they call these? What does he call them? The Jumpman Jack Trainers, um, which I I I think he also kind of coins as the Jumpman Jack T Rexes. I guess that's just like kind of like um, whatever cool way to say uh, trainer. But here we go, guys. Yeah, so Travis Scott and Nike have collaborated on a bunch of stuff, but. Um, it's probably one of them, other than obviously, you know, working with Michael Jordan, Travis Scott, I think is probably the most successful collaborator with Nike. So they love him so much. It's been so much of a success. They gave him his own shoe. So this is uh, Travis Scott's own Nike shoe, which is, that's my dream. If there's, if, if I had three wishes, one of my wishes would would be to have like a my own Nike or, you know, shoe or own collaboration with like Nike, but... Yeah, so take a look at these guys. Um, they're really cool, man. I mean, they're really kind of like unique. They're interesting. Um, uh, I love the colorway. So these actually released also in a cream brown colorway as well. I'm not big into brown. I'm red's definitely one of my favorite colors. Um, and um, so I saw these, and I'm like, I gotta get these. And I will say, man. These uh not only are they really cool, but the materials feel really awesome. Like you have like really good leather. I don't know if you guys can see the re- the leather is like kind of like tumbled. Um, you have a suede swoosh, which is really nice. You have this like strap on here, which is also really nice tumbled leather. You got this uh, sole right here. I don't even. I'm not even sure what material it is. Probably like a rubber or something. But uh, you have a. Uh, Jack on the bottom, which is uh, Travis Scott's real name. I, I think it's like J- Jaquez or something. Jaquez. Um, so that's just like his real name on the bottom. It's kind of like this weird imprint of like, you know, the ground. I guess if you're like walking on soil, that's kind of what, you know, you put your shoe on the ground. It's kind of what happens. Um, and then you have his smiley face back there on the back and like another like kind of suede material here. I haven't tried them on yet, but... When I put my hands inside, they feel really comfortable. A lot of cushion on the side, um, like kind of like a, like a, like just extra padding, like a Nike SB. Um, and then you have like a really nice leather tongue in here with the Jumpman Jack logo. I mean, they did a good job with these, man. They put effort. Nike does not really put effort into a lot of uh, Jordans, especially like the remakes they're doing. Like, I, I did a, a video of the Jordan Four militaries that came out earlier, and like those materials, like it just feels like you're putting on a a, a rock. You know, it's like you dug a hole in a rock and you shoved your foot in it. Um, but yeah, they like I you know obviously it's like you know when they make these retros, they mass produce them like they make almost like a million pairs. So I guess they're just using cheap materials to do them, which is weird because then they also keep increasing the prices, which is kind of a dick move, but. With all uh, Travis Scott's uh, collaborations, they don't make as many pairs. They try to keep them like low stock, low quantity to increase the hype. So I guess 
instance, they make a little less pairs. They put the better materials on them. And this one, so the brown one is kind of like the the first OG because Travis Scott's like, I, a lot of his shoes are brown um, and sale, which is like, you know, everyone's got their favorite color. Brown is probably like way below, way low on the list of my favorite colors. Um, but this is also the alternative that came out with the brown ones. This one, I, I believe, has less stock, a little bit more rare. The brown ones released on Nike.com, the sneakers app. It was also released on his website. Um, and then I guess maybe some tier zero stores got them. Tier zero stores are like the luxury boutique stores that Nike's, uh, give stuff to these only released on Travis Scott's website. So these are more rare. I think there was a sneaker slash Nike.com drop, but it was only for people that were living in Houston, which is where Travis Scott's from. So obviously it's. It's so typical. It's like the pair I want is the most rare pair. Um, but the interesting thing enough is like when these first came out, Travis Scott was um, teasing them a lot on his like Instagram and his like music videos because like, you know, he just showed up out of nowhere wearing these shoes that no one's ever seen. So there was a lot of hype he would build around it. I mean, I think he was like wearing these, you know, just showing them off on Instagram and stuff for like a year. Um, so the hype before the release was pretty crazy. They were dumb expensive online. Like, if you try to get them on the resale market, it was, like, thousands of dollars. Um, but ever since the release, the months after the release, these have actually gone down considerably. This pair was about, uh, I think, $400, um, which is a lot, I know, for most people. But, like, um, I've, I've done worse with sneakers. So, um, this is kind of tame. And um, I think these are really cool. Um, next time I go out... Maybe, um, I don't know. I'm weird because, like, I look at shoes, like, like you know, especially pairs like these, like, are really nice collaborations or shoes that have, like, kind of, like, meaning behind it, like a story. I do look at them like pieces of art, like works of art. So I like to, like, not wear them for maybe, like, a month or two to kind of, like, observe them, like a painting, right? Um, but at some point I will wear these. Um, it's just like when I wear them, they get dirty. So I don't want to like, you know, like legitimately like this is, you know, this is, you know, I, I confess a lot of things about my personal life to you guys. Um, I don't know if this is embarrassing, but like when I get a pair of shoes that are new, I keep them like, um, unworn and dead stock for a couple of months. And like, if I go in the living room to work or do something like I'll bring the shoes out and kind of put them on display on like the corner over there, just, you know, so they're like, like a painting, like you would with a painting, like you hang them. So I kind of hang them around, um, um, I just, I just admire them, you know, but, um, yeah, when they're dirty, you don't want them like, you know, on your table or on your couch or anything, you know? So yeah, I just like to, you know, admire them and stuff, uh, while they're still brand new and clean, but yeah, I'll get these on eventually. I hear they're very comfortable, which is cool. And I guess I'll share this with you guys real quick too. Here's the box it came in. It's a gigantic box. This is like an OD big box. Um, and it's very unique. Like, there's no other shoe with this kind of uh, uh, stuff on the box. So you have Jack here, which is, I said, you know, earlier, it's just uh, uh, Travis Scott's real name. Jumpman on the, the sides of the box. Whoop! Another Jack here. Jack off. And then you have these three little lines, which I'm, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but he a lot of times, like, he'll put those three lines on top of, like, certain letters and words i guess to accentuate something um the box kind of slides off like that um and then here you go you have a brown paper that has jack all over it all over it let me see let me just try to pull up let me get closer so the box has like jack over it um and then the shoes actually come in a duffel bag. I guess you call it a dust bag. Um, there's a lot of shoes that, exclusive shoes that kind of have this thing where they put, give them to you in duffel bags, which I don't really understand. Um, 
But uh, yeah, it's a nice little touch. Um, it has uh, the smiley face and the Jumpman logo on there. And that's where the shoes are in. Um, the other pair is in here. I don't want to take it out because that's like brand new. I don't want to like... Um, actually, no, because it, it comes with extra laces. So let me show you the extra laces. It's so funny. Like this is this is so it's in the duffel bag like this. It kind of, it kind of feels like I'm like about to eat like a like a subway sandwich or something. You know, it's like wrapped up like a like a subway sandwich. Um, there's a little sticker on here that says uh, the Jack graphic will wear off with use over time. I guess that's uh, this thing will wear off over time as you wear them. Um, I'll show you guys. The laces, so it comes with uh, sail laces, black laces with uh, like print on them, and then red laces. Here, let me show you guys. I'm like wrapping it like I'm saving my sandwich for later. <laughs> yeah, I don't like um, the... So I have the left pair I've been like um, kind of hanging around the house. The right pair I've been keeping in the box and I didn't want to take it out because the right pair has that like pris like basically new shoe smell and it's, it smells so good as a sneakerhead. You really love the, the smell of new, like brand new, right out of the factory, right out of the hands of that little Chinese kids, <laughs> you know. Hands. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, give me, give me like five seconds, guys. Like properly, uh, boxes. The the lid won't go all the way down. I think I messed up somehow. There we go. Yeah. So that's. Those are the new uh, Jumpman Jacks, man. Um, they're very cool. Um, Travis, I, th I believe they have a lot more different colorways coming out uh, this year. I believe there's an all white pair coming out. There is a black and blue pair coming out. There's a black and brown pair coming out. Um, these are the only when he when he was uh, wearing these on his Instagram page. This is the pair I was like, I need those just because I'm a, a red's my favorite color and all the other Travis Scott collaborations, none of them had a red check on them. Um, for the most part, there are black checks or white checks. Um, the olives, Jordan one lows, another one of my favorites has a green check. So um, I always kind of like, cause like I said, like Travis usually does stuff with like the colors brown and like olive and like uh sale um so you know i always secretly was hoping he would make a shoe with red on it and this is pretty much the only one i can think of that has like like red as like a primary color so i saw these i had to get them the other ones look cool too like the brown ones like i said they look cool i just like i just don't wear a lot of brown i'm that's not my color the black and uh blue the black and blue ones look cool but i'm not a big fan of blue the black and brown ones look pretty dope but um i don't i just don't wear enough brown to justify buying a pair i do like i said i wear a lot of red i, re I wear a lot of white and black so like these i'm gonna actually wear these you know um i also believe there's a maybe there's an all black pair but yeah th there's more coming out i mean like I said, he just started this uh, new shoe. Uh, this is his new shoe, and I, you know, 
like with the other silhouettes Nike has, they're probably going to end up making a million more. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that, man. If there's any sneakerheads out there, um, this is a pretty big deal. As you guys know, this is like a pretty hyped up shoe and um, really rare. And I, I haven't seen anyone with a pair. I, I'm the only person I know that has a pair. So um, I'm weird. I like being the only guy with with a certain with, with sneakers, you know. If I see another person with the same sneaker as me, I immediately like want to just throw it in the garbage. I don't know why I'm like that. I just like to be different. I want to be unique, man. I'm different. I'm different, bitch. I'm different. All right, guys. So um, to end this Tuesday's podcast, I like to I like to read a motivational quote to you guys. I uh, I skipped on the motivational quote last week. Um, oh my god! I just checked. I'm so. I am so done with uh, spam, dude. I get spam every day. It's just the worst. What do we got here? Another one. This is so insane, dude. Like, I get so many emails about just, just, uh, oh, we, you know, do you want to uh, uh, get paid to do a brand promotion? Oh, do you want to um, get more followers? It's just like, God, it's so scary that like they just they they know what I'm doing and they're, they're trying to scam me. For, there's a scam for everything. I, I bet you there's a guy who who's a plumber that gets that there's some kind of scam for plumbers out there. You know, you need a better plunger. Uh, send us all your money, your credit card info. We'll get you the best plunger in the world. You know, God, it's so disgusting. There are literally people that are like. All right, how am I going to pay my rent this month? How many people do I got to scam, you know? Or how can I make my scam better? Ugh. Anyways, so guys, here is the motivational quote of the week. I didn't do one last Saturday. I, I uh, you know, I got too carried away with the, telling the story about getting stuck at the airport. So um, this is a quote that I actually found in the wild. I was actually, when I went to did the voiceover recording, I was at Otto's place. And like I said, Otto's got so much cool stuff. He's got all these books, nonfiction, fiction, all these old record labels, um, just a lot of these like uh, cool like trinkets and like memorabilia stuff. And I saw on his wall, he had like a chalkboard and he had a quote on there that I found was uh, very interesting. Here's the quote. Process saves us from the poverty of our intentions. Process saves us from the poverty of our intentions. This is a really uh, cool quote because, in a way, it's like a word salad, right? It's just, it's a lot of like like you know, you know, just like you, you you don't really hear a lot of these words, poverty and intentions and process. It's a it's an interesting uh, quote, right? Just by reading it, you, you, you can always like you already feel like there's like a, a meaning behind it, like a like a hidden, distinct meaning behind it. But for what I took for it is that we all have intentions, right? Whether it's goals, whether it's just uh, you know things we want to do, people we want to see, things we want to buy, and those things r literally run our lives. You know, like my goal, let's say it's like, all right, I want to get a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, right? Now, obviously, that's my goal, but in a way, it's like that goal runs my life. It's just like I do this for that. 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 And then I've always said this, too. It's like when you have goals, when you have things you want to accomplish, it's a great thing. Um, but in a way, it could take a long, especially really like hard to reach, like actual like big goals. A lot of those things take time and years. And when you kind of are going through that process, there's a lot of like getting held back, getting um, unmotivated, being, you know, whatever, taking two steps back. Obviously, you have good, you know, things when things are going well, right? It's just a process. It's a long journey. And in that, you know, sometimes your goal in a way can like enslave you. And I guess that's kind of where the poverty comes from. It kind of bankrupts you. It kind of takes away. It could take away your joy. It could take away your time. And it could also just make you kind of think and obsess. And what I like about this quote, and what I think what it means is that the process saves us from the poverty of those. So it's like 
if you have like, you know, obviously we have long term goals and short term goals. So when you kind of break down the process of how you're going to get to that and you just kind of like focus and like narrow in on what you have to do every day to achieve that goal and kind of obsess over it. That makes it a lot easier and it can kind of like free you from like the just like overwhelmingness of like the big goal you want to accomplish. Does that make sense? It's like with stand up, it's just like, obviously, it's like, I want to be able to like sell more tickets. I want to get on TV. I want to this and that. But like the process is writing material, rewriting material, watching video and all that stuff. And it's just like if I'm always thinking about making it every day, why am I not further? Why are they getting that? When am I going to get there? Like I'm going to be miserable, sad and impoverished in a way if you think about it. Right. I'm not going to have any joy. I'm not going to be rich with with happiness or, or any good feelings. I'm just going to be constantly wanting and yearning. But when I just focus on the process, the thing I love the most, which is actually writing, performing, rewriting, all that stuff, which I, I love and I obsess over and I can get lost in those little things. Um, It kind of frees me from thinking about those like big goals and trying to get the play and like all that stuff. So I think this is a great quote. Um. It's one of these quotes who it just sums up perfectly, just such a a thing we don't like a process and action we don't think about, you know? Yeah, and I guess another way you can relate it is just like let's say um you're trying to get like a, a raise at your job or you have just I don't know. Oh, here's another one. So I'll give you another it's like, you know, working out. Let's say you want to lose twenty pounds, right? If you just think about, oh my god, lose twenty pounds, that's gonna take weeks, months, hard work, this, that. Again, it's just like you kind of you can you can get discouraged and it seems so far and then it's just like you feel bad and you feel like you want to give up and you feel kind of how you feel like if you have nothing, you know? But if you just focus on like that every day, that one workout, what you're going to do, just having the best workout of that day, you know? Just the process, eating right, like you just focus on the little things and obs- and get, you know, into that. The next thing you know, it's like it's not even going to, things are going to fly by and then it's just going to become habit. So yeah, man, I think, uh, I mean, I've kind of had quotes like this before where it's just like, you know, don't always look at what you don't have, appreciate what you have. Or sometimes, you know, don't always be looking at like, you know, how, where you're trying to go, look at like how far you came, you know, this is kind of one of those, uh, kind of quotes. And I think it's really, 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 uh, really cool. And, um, you know, the process of this podcast is about the end. Uh, guys, um, thank you so much for kicking it with me this week. Uh, real quick before I sign off here, um, since I'm back home, there will be a weekend podcast. So I'll talk to you on Saturday. Um, guys, like I said, the watch hours were so close to 4,000, so close to monetization. If you have some extra time, please go watch this uh, one of the stand-up clips I posted, you know, every minute you watch helps me get me to my goal. If you could just do like a little extra this week, let's just get there, um, get things rolling. I would appreciate that. If you want to support the podcast and just support me, um, I have Patreon, patreon.com slash James Camacho. It's five bucks a month, which is like a dollar. What? I saw Asian 25 cents a, a week. You get the podcast early, and you just get to support me and uh, my uh, my silly dreams. Um, other than that, guys, thanks for uh, always tuning in. I hope you, um, I don't know, I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, it's always fun kicking in with you. And I'm going to, we'll kick it on Friday. No, we'll kick it on Saturday. All right. Adios.